and, and his ankles were just oozing out of his back where they whipped him so hard and Pilate saw and he was crying out and his tongue was swelling up and everybody thought that was funny. But guess what? God's going to have the last laugh. God said, I'm going to laugh at them when their derision cometh. We don't think it's funny. We think it's wonderful. He died for us. We marvel at that. We say, why would he do it for me? All I know is grace, neighbor. It's grace. I praise his name. He saved, saved me. Read on. He said, all that, verse 7, all that see me laugh me to scorn, they shoot out the lip. Well, what about that? Try to look intelligent. Well, what do you think about this? What do you think about this fellow dying up here? What do you think? What do you care what you think? Uh, the Bible said here, they shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, you trust in the Lord, that he would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. You see the self-righteousness in this crowd? Well, he's trusting the Lord, I guess. Maybe God don't hear him. What do you think? What do you think about that, Abel? What, that you think maybe God heard that guy? No, I don't think he did. Well, he trusts in God. Where's his God right now? That, that philosophical, a self-serving, self-righteous bunch of hypocrites mocked Jesus on the cross. But, buddy, it'll be a different day when he shows up again. It'll be a different day. Read on. Verse 9, But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me to open. I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. He was in deep trouble. He took that trouble willingly. He took it on himself willingly. He didn't run from it. He didn't shy away from it. He didn't say, I'm out of here. I'm going back to heaven. Trouble came, and he met it head on, thank God. I got news for you. You reject Jesus Christ, your Savior. You go on your merry way and die without Christ. You're going to have some trouble. Forever in hell. The Bible said, trouble is near, and there is none to help me. Jesus cried out off that cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God couldn't look on sin. The Bible said he's of pure eyes and look on sin. My dirty sin and my filthy sin and your depraved sin was laid on Jesus Christ, God's Son, and God turned his back on him and judged that sin on Christ. In hell, people will cry out, Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Save me! Save me! God's going to turn his back. You made your way. You rejected my son. I can't answer your prayer today. The Bible said here, he cried out and he said, I mean, I, I, nobody's here. I'm alone. Have you ever been, have you ever suffered alone? Have you ever had something happen to you, but a loved one was there, somebody, your husband, your wife, your neighbor, to hold your hand and get you through it? There was nobody for Jesus Christ. Nobody. Read on. Verse 12, many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Basin beset me around. You say, who are these bulls? Well, they're demonic creatures as far as I know. So how do you know that? Verse 13. They gape them over with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. Who's that? <laughs> That's the devil. These bulls of Bashan, the demons of hell, were present. And in verse 13, the Lord talks about a ravening, roaring lion. That's the devil. And his crowd, and they gaped upon him. He hung there, and they gaped upon him. They said, all right, show us what you got. Show us where you are. You said you were the Son of God. Let's get down off that cross. They gaped upon him. And they let me tell you something. In hell, you die without Christ. In hell, they'll gape upon you. Those demons will scream and cry out and mock you because you rejected the only begotten Son of God. Read on. He says this. He said, my strength is dried up. Or in verse 14, I am poured out like water. My bones are all out of joint. My heart is like wax. It melts in the midst of my bowels. He was on fire inside. He felt like his heart was just on fire and melting. He felt like that it, whenever, that, whenever that cross hit the bottom of that hole and he was nailed to it, it pulled all his bones out of joint. His bones were not broken. That was prophecy. They did not break his bones. And his bones were not broken, but they were pulled out of joint. Every one of them added to the torture and the torment and the horror that he was facing. Verse 15, my strength is dried up like a potsherd. A potsherd is just a piece of pottery that's put into a kiln, into a, a, an oven and made very hard and dry. And he said, I feel like I'm in an oven right now. I, my, my, I have no moisture that I can put up my mouth. My tongue cleaveth to my jaws. 
Thou hast brought me to the dust of death. You ever been so thirsty? You ever been so thirsty that your tongue just stuck to the inside of your jaw? You all just had surgery. You can't eat or drink anything. You lay there in that bed waiting for him to come and get you, and you'd give anything for a drink of water. They don't even let you suck on ice chips most of the time. They don't want it, and your mouth is so dry, and your throat is closing up. Neighbor, on the cross, magnify that a million times. That's what Jesus suffered for me and you. But guess what? In hell, in hell, without Christ rejecting Jesus, you'll suffer that forever. That rich man said, send me a drop of water. Give me just one drop of water. Oh, God, one drop of water. And God said, there ain't no drops of water. None. Jesus took it for you. Aren't you getting this this morning? You don't have to go to hell. He suffered in your place, thank God. You don't have to. But he suffered your hell, your punishment. Why? Because of our sin. Now read on. Look what he said. He said, for dogs, verse 16, for dogs have come past me. The assembly of the wicked have been closed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Dogs in the Bible were either Gentiles or Sodomites. And probably both were around the cross that day. And he said, they, they come past me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. They drove those nails into his hands and his feet. Think about just that part of it, the horrible part of knowing when you laid your hands on that cross, a man with a big hammer and a long spike nail was getting ready to pierce your hand and drive it through your pen to that cross. They did it three times, both hands and his feet. Can you imagine what that... What, you say, I don't understand. I don't, I don't either. All I know is he did it because he loved you and I. He took it. Read on. Notice what he says. Verse 17, I may tell all my bones. He was in such a, a miserable place on that cross that all of his bones were showing. Think about being on that cross. His feet were nailed, but when he, when he let his knees collapse, it just wrung his hands out and pulled his shoulders apart. And when he raised up on his knees just to lock his knees to give his shoulders rest, it, his feet just went crazy. And, he, and that pain up through his, his hips and his legs, there was no comfortable place on the cross. And they'd beaten him all night in Pilate's Hall. Can you imagine what it felt like raising up and down on that cross with that thing against your back already laid open? already infected, already bloody, already uh, skin exposed and flesh exposed, but it, there was no comfortable place. And for all those hours, he tossed and turned and cried out on that cross. He said, could he got off in a 30 second? He could have got off in a minute. Spoke the word and got off, but he stayed on the cross. Read on. Verse 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots on my vestments. Let me tell you something, friend. What was that all about? Because that was, a, that was a fulfillment of prophecy. The prophets prophesied that was going to happen. But it showed the greed of men. But it showed the de depravity of men. They wanted the last bit of degradation.